Good morning, everyone. We're just going to wait a couple more minutes to let people join and then we'll get the webinar started. Looks like, looks like we have some participants joining. It's always hard the day after a long holiday weekend, isn't it? <laughs> to come back to reality. <laughs> All right, we're going to get started here in just a minute. And for those of you that have joined, we just started a poll, just a, a quick introduction and a way for you guys to get involved in this webinar starting right early in the morning. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. I love these polls or we can get some of that interaction. Yeah, definitely fun. And to access the poll, if, if you uh, everybody sees that little button towards the bottom, um, you're kind of in the middle where it says Q&A and then polls right next to it. If you click on polls, it will bring up what the poll question is and you can respond to it there. All right, so we're at 1031, so I'm going to go ahead and get us kicked off. We may have some uh, additional people joining, but welcome, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful long holiday weekend, um, enjoyed the fantastic weather. I know up here in Michigan, it was amazing. You couldn't have planned a better uh, weather weekend, and uh, trust me, up here in Michigan, we take advantage of those <laughs> uh, of those wonderful weekends. Um, thank you so much for joining the webinar with our service provider, Observe AI. We're excited to introduce you to them if you're not familiar with them, but we've really got a hot topic on automation today. Um, my name is Catherine Berenbrinker. I'm the president and CEO of Simplicity Communications. Just a couple of things on our housekeeping. I really wanted to take a moment to thank Doug Seitz. He's our marketing manager for all the marketing efforts and running today's webinar, keeping us on track. And then also Doug and Lorraine for sending out all the invitations and getting people um, here on this first day after the holiday. Um, if you have any questions, uh, as Paul just pointed out on the lower menu bar, you will see um, Q&A and polls, just go ahead and uh, ask any questions. Paul's gonna be monitoring the Q&A um, and he will uh, ask our presenters questions along the way. So don't hesitate to throw those questions out there. All right, Kevin, go ahead and uh, jump to slide number two. We're gonna talk a little bit about um, simplicity and what we do, and then we're gonna dive into our, our webinar today. And then at the end, we'll also give uh, opportunity for questions and answers. So Simplicity Communication, this is our 17th year in business, and we are certified women um, business, and we just got a recertification for the third time, so we're really excited about that. We're headquartered in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and we also have a Dallas, Texas office. We are a technology agent that makes the process of procuring technology easier for our customers. So if you go to the next slide for me, the easiest way to break down what we do is is really three areas. We have our um, our backbone of our company is expense management, where we look at everything that you procure in technology that that generates an invoice or a contract, and we organize those and optimize them and put them in our inventory management database. And that helps consolidate and reduce and just stay in front of all of those expenses. Um, we tend to see when we start working with new clients about a, a, a 30 to 50% savings when we dive into what those invoices are. I believe they're made confusing on purpose and you really need somebody to dive in there. So that's really the heart of our business, um, but it really goes into designing emerging technologies like what we're gonna show you today. And one area that we have is our customer experience and automation. Um, 
with the talent crisis and you know the lack of the the talent and turnover companies are really looking at their workflow and their process and we need to do things differently so that's a big area that we've seen um, focus uh, the last couple of years um, we also do managed IT and cybersecurity. anything that you touch or put in your uh, company it needs to be wrapped around security so we always when we work with clients and and deploy new emerging technologies, we always say, say, okay, how are we gonna secure that? So this is um, the areas that we work on. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Paul Nagel now. Paul is my VP of customer experience. He started with our company last October and he's been instrumental in growing our um, customer experience and automation practice. So Paul, why don't you go ahead and introduce Observe AI today? Great, thank you, Catherine. Um, appreciate all the participants that uh, have braved the weekend, the long holiday weekend and with Memorial Day and uh, joined us this morning. So I appreciate everybody being here. I uh, want to introduce Mandy Jarman and Kevin Lustig from the Observe AI team um, who are here today to help us understand a little bit more about what conversational AI is and how that pertains to the chat GPT world that's out there and what they've been doing long before um, chat gpt became a big buzz so uh, mandy and kevin i'll turn it over to you awesome thanks so much paul Catherine, simplicity team we're really excited to share yeah what we're doing observe is we're actually turning six in just next month so we've been in this space for a while we know ai is not new but it's definitely a big buzzword like paul said but we like to think, right, AI is not all created equal. It's not all the same thing. It's not used for all the same reasons. So we're specifically gonna talk about what we're doing, which is AI built for the contact center. So you've all heard this call has been monitored and recorded for quality and training, but how many of those calls or interactions, chats, texts, emails, actually get evaluated on the back end? If you're not listening to everything, you could be assuming things about your business and what your customers are saying and making business decisions based on those assumptions. So Observe AI is a contact center agnostic solution. So we sit on top of all contact centers on-prem or in the cloud, and we take in 100% of those interactions. That's what you're gonna see over here, this post interaction AI. We're taking in everything from your call recordings, and then we break that information out into key moments is what we call them or insights, KPIs that your specific business wants to see. What we're doing with this data is we're now using it effectively. We're not just listening to it, but we're training agents. We're coaching them up effectively on, on what they need to be trained on. I know that's a really big pain point right now in contact centers is agent attrition. So how can we retain our agents, coach them better, give them more of a culture back into our business, you know, now that everyone's working from home. And then we go a step further with that and we take all that post interaction data and we create a unique real time environment with tools like agent assist and supervisor assist that are again, scripts for your agents that are tailored to their needs. Paul mentioned GPT. Kevin's gonna show you a lot around what we're doing with generative AI. We've built our own uh, LLM, which Kevin can explain as well. So when we talk about security, like Catherine mentioned, that's where we get into those type of conversations to make sure that all of your data is staying secure. So quick overview of who we are. I'm gonna turn it over to Kevin so you guys can actually jump in and see what we're doing at Observe. Perfect, thank you, Mandy. All right. Um, so yeah, I'll go through kind of a, a demo here today. I'm really gonna focus on, again, the, the agent experience, coaching, um, getting into the, kind of the areas that are going to be the, really the focus that your contact center needs to focus on when it comes towards uh, where does your agents need the most uh, help and, and coaching on. And this is basically because we're getting into seeing this information across every single interaction that's coming into the contact center. So when we log into the dashboard, this is the initial page that we see, and this is what we call the scorecard tab. It's essentially a very high overview of what's going on within the contact center. So you can see we might be looking over the last week, last 30 days, we have around 4,700 interactions. Again, this can be voice, this could be chat, this could be email, it could be SMS. Uh, and then you see these different tiles on the screen and these tiles are what G uh, Mandy was referencing before. Uh, these, these moments, these points of interest you're looking to track across every single interaction. So essentially what they're saying here is out of the 4,700 interactions that we have, 
2.03 have some kind of instance of supervisor escalation where that customer said, I need to speak to a manager, I need to speak to a supervisor. Or 18.9% have some kind of instance of negative customer sentiment where that customer is shown the frustration and is, and is upset on the interaction. Now, these are very CSATS focused metrics. They're important to any contact center environment. But the key takeaways, you're able to customize and tailor these moments to the different processes that your agents are supposed to follow based off the type of interaction that they're taking. So, you know, are they doing the proper call opening? You know, are they doing the correct call hold procedure? Looking at agent behavior based off of a customer saying something, are agents responding the right way? Are they objection handling correctly? Um, you know, are they looking into upsell cross-sell opportunities based off of what customers are saying? So again, really getting into the weeds of what you're able to track from an agent perspective, even in coming and incorporating what that customer is saying on the call. You can also look at it from a compliance aspect. This is a very huge thing. Uh, a lot of people sit there, you know, when it comes towards any highly regulated industry, whether it's, you know, you're looking at FinServe, you know, in the healthcare space, you know, customer verification is a very important thing. And a lot of times, you know, contact centers hope and rely on, you know, possibly finding that scenario where an agent isn't doing the correct scenario. Um, but now we can utilize these moments to ensure that agents are verifying those customers before they're giving any type of financial information or giving out any type of healthcare related information. This becomes a huge aspect to make sure that you're staying within compliance and that your agents are meeting the needs when it comes towards what they're supposed to do from a process perspective. Now, the other area you can really dive into as well, which is a, another benefit beyond just, you know, the agent experience and looking at where we need to coach them is interaction drivers. Why are people contacting us? Um, a lot of contact centers rely on disposition codes or looking at certain cues to try and have a better understanding. And, and really it doesn't give a full view of it. There's a lot of different things that can happen on a single interaction. And just using a single disposition code is losing out on that information. But now by utilizing moments, I can have a better understanding of why are people contacting us and utilize that from a business perspective. What do we need to push more self-service? You know, where can we start to incorporate this from an IVR perspective? Um, even coming into play of, again, where do we need to train our agents most effectively because we see seasonality peak views in, in this particular area that people are contacting us during this period of time. So again, you can start to get a more holistic view of why people are contacting us. Now, there's a couple different ways you can kind of slice and dice this data. Uh, one is through teams. So you could look at teams a couple different ways. Uh, your teams could be, as a supervisor, I have my team that has my agents underneath me, and I'm only seeing information that's relevant to them. Um, so that's a really important view. You're only seeing the information in my management, you know, who I oversee. The other way you can look at it is more from a department aspect. So what I might look for in a call that's around billing versus one that might be, let's say, more of a customer service focused one, those are going to be very different things that I'm going to want to track. So I can associate different moments and different agents and types of phone calls to a particular team so that the different moments that are going to be relevant for that type of interaction that's being taken is the only thing that's being displayed. You could, again, look that beyond just the types of calls and get even into more of marketing and, and even legal. You know, the nice thing with all these different interactions is you can you can view them from so many different lenses. What you're looking for from an agent perspective and what you might be looking for marketing, very different things. Your team has the capability of having that lens and utilizing the moments in cross-functional areas. The other way we can kind of interact with this type of data is what with through what we call metadata. So it's the information we're receiving about the interaction. So I might sit there and say, you know what, I want to see all calls that are over 15 minutes long. What this does is now it updates the information. I'm not looking at the original 4,700. Now I'm looking at 651 and all the metrics have updated. I see like negative customer sentiment is increased, dead air is increased. I might start to see like hold time violations. But also, again, starting to have a better understanding of what types of interactions are leading towards those longer ones. So now I can start to make business decisions. Is this an operational issue? You know, if I'm looking and seeing, you know, delivery issues are more consistently higher, is that because an agent has to put the customer on hold, call a distribution center, and understand why that delivery issue is happening? Can we streamline that process a little bit better? Or is this training opportunities? Is this really that agents aren't as familiar with these types of interactions and these types of processes? And we need to actually train and cross-train our agents to make sure that they're relevant to it. So the nice thing is, again, you can really start to get a better and holistic view around exactly what are agents uh, needing to be focused on. 
and Kevin, okay. just on that too, yeah. I was just going to say, when you start to look at those types of business decisions and how to make them, that's when you start to see cost savings. So Catherine mentioned, you know, this is where Simplicity can come in and say, okay, we're looking at all of this data. You know, if we reduced our average handle time or these hold time violations or these moments of dead air, if we took those agents, trained them more appropriately, you know, we can save X, Y, Z by just five seconds off at every call. So starting to look at those longer ones, those are where you get to see the ROI of Observe AI. Absolutely, no, it's a great call out. So again, these moments are, are really a good foundation of our platform because it really is what fuels the rest of the workflow. Because from here now, now we're gonna kind of switch directions and really much more focus on the QA perspective and agent coaching. So in traditional you know, contact centers and traditional QA, uh, generally what most of the time you end up seeing is a you know, QA person comes in, they review a particular phone call, or they look at a specific list of you know, interactions. And they might look at certain disposition codes, or they might look at certain cues. Um, but for all intents and purposes, it really is just looking at a list of phone calls or a list of chats or emails and just randomly selecting. And so where we can start to change that is now we can utilize this because we can start to utilize moments to start and drill down. So again, maybe I am focusing on, you know, I've got a new agent. They've just come on from onboarding. I'm starting to see that supervisor escalation is increasing within their kind of group. I want to see how does those agents de-escalate a situation when a customer gets upset. If I go to my sentiment index category, click on my negative customer sentiment moment, I'm now drilling down on this particular area. I'm not selecting from the original 4,700 phone calls and randomly just selecting. Now I've got a subset that has at least one instance of negative customer sentiment. Maybe I also want to see where there's a whole time violation as well. Oops, sorry about that. Um, and so now we've drilled down a little bit more and now we're getting down to, you know, now we have 232 phone calls where I know there's something effective to review here. And again, the idea here is not to be punitive. It's not to only look at bad interactions or look at only negative stuff. The idea is I can provide criteria to quickly drill down and focus in on the areas. You might have new processes or maybe new service offerings that you're providing. How would I find an interaction where an agent is review, you know, speaking towards this? I would have to hunt and peck and hopefully find that interaction. Now I can start to utilize moments to quickly drill down. From there again, I can see the duration of the interaction, who is the agent that took it. I can also see all of the other moments that were flagged beyond just the ones that I selected. Again, just more context of what's happening on this interaction. Once you find the interaction you wanna review, this, we can go now to what we call the interaction details page. So with a phone call, what we essentially have is a visual representation of the talk track between the agent and the customer, the ability to play the audio. We have the full transcription in the middle here, again, broken out from when the agent is talking versus when the customer is talking. And then we have all of our moments that have been either found or not found via dropdown on the left-hand side. So again, I kind of came into this particular scenario saying, hey, agents, a little bit more supervisor escalation, want to see how they de-escalate a situation when a customer gets upset. I go to my sentiment index category, go to my negative customer sentiment moment, click on a particular snippet, it takes me both in the audio and the transcription to exactly where that was flagged. And why this is key is if I was doing this manually, I would have to listen to this phone call for 28 minutes before I would have gotten to this. I'm now able to jump to in about five seconds. This is where you can really start to do the streamlined process because now we can start to incorporate this within the evaluation portion of it as well. And what you're gonna to start to do is based off of the by having the evaluation form directly within our view, we can start to build out moments that tailor to the different questions. So did the agent verify the customer? I can go to my compliance and HT section, click on my customer verification moment, click on that snippet. It takes me exactly to where they say, can you please confirm to me your shipping and billing address? I click yes and go. You know, was there a hold time violation? Well, I've got my hold time violation moment. I see two different instances there. I click yes and go on. This is really where we start to see the streamline because now we can start to utilize these moments to jump to the specific parts of the interaction where I'm able to answer these questions or review the information to see exactly what type of feedback we need to get. So this streamline really shows productivity from a QA perspective. Now, where we can take this a step further is when we start to incorporate what we call auto QA. And this is essentially automating some portion of the evaluation form. And we roll this out in two different phases. The initial phase is what we call calibration. And essentially what it is, is it's, it's the capability of providing a suggestion based off the configuration that we've set up. So it says here, did the agent verify the customer? Well, we suggest yes, 
because of these things that were found on the interaction. Now, your QA team has the capability to come in and say, you know what, no, I don't agree with that. And here's the reason why. So it's actually providing feedback to the system to see what do we need to adjust? Do we need to you know, rework a moment? Do we need to see kind of adjust the workflow? And so then we can make those changes. And then once we have the QA team consistently agreeing with a particular suggestion on a particular question, that's where we can turn this to now autofill across every single interaction that's coming into the contact center. So now you're not getting information on, you know, maybe the four to six evaluations that you're, you know, used to from you know, every two weeks for an agent. I'm getting this question answered on every single interaction that's coming into the contact center for each agent. And so why this calibration phase is so important is because you have to have confidence that this system is answering the question correctly. And so during this calibration phase, we're actually aligning the system with exactly how your QA would answer these questions by the feedback that they're providing and making those adjustments. Again, really, really powerful because now I'm getting all of this information across every single interaction to get to a point to know exactly where agents should be focusing their attentions and where we should be coaching them. And Kevin, I think this is important to call out, right? A lot of times I think people think AI, automation, oh my gosh, my job's at risk. We are not here necessarily to displace the agents, right? What you just saw Kevin do, you still need an agent there. You still need your quality assurance team. This is just making them significantly more efficient, yep. getting them through more information and helping them on the back end. It's more of a tool and assist, right? Not a displacement. You got it. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing because it's, we always talk back to, is a human eye just to review, did the agent verify the customer or did they do the proper call opening? Is that really worth their time? It's really a objective based yes or no question. Let the system answer these particular types of questions. And now you can have QA be in a much more strategic role where they're really impacting customer experience than anything more than anything else. Those soft skills, those things that you want human eyes reviewing and allowing the system to really automate the majority of the process to make sure that they're following the right procedures, doing the right processes and allowing, again, QA to be much more strategic and have a little bit more of a different view on how they can help the contact center. I'll highlight as well, especially from just a kind of security aspect, we do redact any PCI or PII information directly out of the transcript and the audio recording. And this can be selective. You might sit there and say, hey, I need a you know 12 digit account number unredacted and everything else redacted. You can get down to that level of granularity. Now, from here, this is really now the beginning portion of it in terms of the QA process. Now we're getting to where we can really provide this feedback in a very consumer friendly way. And that comes with into our coaching workflow. So within here, I can see, you know, a lot of different areas in terms of uh, uh, within this, I have, you know, a list of my particular agents, how many evaluations been done, what's their average score, uh, the, their total fails, a heat map of their most recent evaluation forms, and when was the last time we coached them? So, you know, now I have as from a supervised perspective, I have all the information to see, am I up to date on my coaching? Who's in my top performers? Who's towards the middle? Who's towards the bottom? Like we've got Alfonso here. He's not doing great recently. We haven't coached him in a little while. Let's drill down and see a little bit more what's going on within him. So now I can get a more drilled down view with this particular agent to see, okay, where, uh, how is he performing? But even coming into, you know, what were the major missed opportunities across those evaluation forms what were the most consistently missed questions? From here, I can see where the proper standard file, four out of six, he failed that. You know, did they greet the customer properly? Three out of six, he failed that. Now, this is what it looks like kind of from that initial phase when we're doing evaluations through um, you know, utilizing moments. When we get to auto QA, you actually have a separate tab that has any question that has auto QA turned on, I now am getting this information across every single branch. And so I'm not looking at the six evaluation forms again for Alfonso, for Molly, I'm seeing over the last week, she's taken 231 phone calls, and here is the most pertinent error we need to focus on. Again, I'm getting it across every single interaction. We always talk about this, when do you get to statistical relevancy? You know, looking at 1% of you know, phone calls for a particular agent or interactions for an agent and deciding that's the most critical error we need to coach on, it's really just not, you know, it's, it's not enough data to really focus on. By utilizing AutoQA, I now have this across every single interaction, and I'm using data-driven points on exactly where I need to coach that agent. So again, much more honed in in terms of where the focus should be for these particular agents. But from here, I can create my coaching session. So I can come in, I can say, you know, where am I focusing on? Maybe I'm doing 
you know, we need to focus on the proper call opening and we also need to focus on customer verification, put in a multitude of different areas. And then within here, I have a list of all my different evaluation forms that have been filled out. I can quickly drill down, see, hey, here's a perfect example where they didn't greet the customer properly. Let's go back, we can add that to my coaching session. Now that gets added in, maybe I add a couple more. So as I'm doing my one-on-one -on -one with my agent, I can view the evaluation form, I can play the audio back. If I need to, I can click this button, it takes us back to that more drill down view that we saw before, but I can provide my feedback. You did great here, you gotta focus a little bit better here, and an action plan. Between now and our next follow-up date, we really gotta focus on that proper call opening and we'll kind of be reviewing it. But again, the nice thing is, is everything is in this single screen. I'm not listening to the call in one section, you know, in one system, doing the evaluation form in another and giving my feedback in another. It's all on this single screen and it all gets tied back to an individual coaching session. Now, the other nice things that I like to highlight within here too as well is a couple different areas. One is it's just as easy for me to find an interaction where Alfonso did the correct call opening. So as I come in and say, hey, we need to coach you, you know, I've been seeing a couple of issues with you, you know, not greeting the customer properly. Let's listen to your phone call from last Tuesday where you did it perfectly. And so now I can coach my agents on their own information and their own calls to say, this is how you should do it. And that's so much more empowering to the agent. They take that feedback better. And again, it gives, it gives them the kind of a ability to say, okay, I just need that repetition. I just need to repeat what I've done in the past. Again, we've seen our, a lot of our customers really enhance their agent experience by doing this. The other thing that's great too is it, you know, I don't have to wait two weeks to see if this coaching session has taken effect. Through auto QA, I can coach an agent at nine in the morning. And by the afternoon, I can have some kind of idea of if that, if that agent has taken that feedback properly. And so, you know, I, and from there I can either, you know, see, okay, we need to course correct. He's still having issues with, you know, greeting the customer properly. Let me nudge him a little bit and say, hey, remember how we talked about it this morning? Or if I've seen him perform well, I can give kudos. Hey, I know we talked about the proper, you know, greeting the customer properly this morning. You hit every single one today, awesome job. So again, that feedback loop is so important because you're shrinking the amount of time it takes. It's not two weeks in between anymore. And especially from this day and age where agents are working from home, they really need that feedback loop in a shorter period because you're not you're not just sitting at the cubicle with these agents anymore. They want that feedback. They want to hear some better information coming towards them. Now, from here, really what we start to look towards is coming into play with uh, around how do we harness this data? How do we get it into a usable state? And this comes into play with when we start to look at our reporting dashboards. So again, we have a lot more information here and a lot more data because now I'm getting this information across every single interaction. We can now start to utilize these dashboards to get it into a usable state. Um, and so we have some that are out of the box, uh, but essentially you have the capability of it building any type of ad hoc report directly within the uh, dashboard. And so here's an example of an auto QA dashboard. So I might see, you know, looking at the last 30 days for this particular team, I can see we've done, you know, 62,000, you know, 100 evaluations, 3,300 of them were failed across 18 agents. I can see week over week trending numbers, month over month, um, getting into even areas of like team wise distribution, seeing this team versus that, who's my top performers, who's my bottom performers, uh, even going into, you know, what to coach on. So looking not at the individual agents anymore. Now I can look at from a team-wise perspective, where do we see the most opportunity to coach these agents? Where do we need to focus our attentions on? And so now it's a really good impact in terms of looking more from a higher level as opposed to the individual agents to see, do we have more of a systematic issue where this, these agents are having issues in these particular areas? Let's really drill down and train these agents on those particular areas. But again, all of this is completely customizable. You can make these bar graphs, chart graphs, the different data points within the system. And again, we're always here to assist with, again, building out these reports to make sure we're providing data that is going to be relevant for what you're tracking. Yeah, Kevin, I think that's it. Let's do another quick poll here real quick. Um, you know, just with the question we want to ask in this next poll is what, uh, what are the biggest concerns or the biggest compliance concerns about conversational AI that the folks on the um, that are participating have? So again, if you go down towards the bottom of the screen, um, right towards the middle, right next to the Q&A, there's the poll button. If you click on that, it'll bring up that poll so that you can respond to that. And as we get those responses, um, we will have some additional answers for any questions that come up on that. Awesome.
And I think what Kevin just showed you, pretty much that's our entire post-call piece of Observe AI um, before we jump into real time. But I did want to note, he did just say something important. This is a lot of information. This is different than what you're doing today in the contact center. So every Observe AI you know, partnership customer of ours does get their own customer success management team. So like Kevin mentioned, we'll help you build these reports, build out these moments. Our team will proactively go in and start to see some trends like Kevin mentioned and be able to come back to your team and say, hey, we're seeing this, we'd recommend this. So we work really like a partnership with you. We're not just saying, hey, here's a ton of data, go for it. Um, we're really here to, to work alongside of your teams. Yep, 100%. And yeah, so, and as Jamie said, or sorry, as Mandy said before, um, you know, this is very focused on the post call, and that's really kind of the demo that we showed there today around the post call. But we do have this capability within a real time perspective. And really, where that comes into play is is utilizing these exact same moments to start to incorporate this with uh, within the agent experience as they're taking the phone call. And so, again, more than you know, as we do follow ups here, more than happy to show this in kind of the real time demo. But um, really, what it is 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 utilizing the capability to have different scripting. So we talked about before, are they doing the customer verification, probing questions, you know, um, uh, taking into, you know, knowledge based perspective. And I'll talk here in just a second around where we're getting more into uh, kind of the LLM and those chat GPT. But it's taking the same type of information and giving that guidance directly within the interaction and the phone call as the agent's taking it. So making sure they're following the right steps, making sure they're writing, asking the right information and even giving them information and answering questions directly within the system so they're not having to put people on hold and you know go talk to a help desk or go talk to you know research what that answer might be you can get this information in real time utilizing our agent assist um, you know real time product along with the supervisor assist which is the capability of agents or with supervisors to be able to review this information in real time as agents are taking those calls as well so again the nice thing here is it's the holistic view of utilizing the post call to really provide that feedback, but utilizing those same moments and that same workflow and process to now deploy this to the agents in real time. And where we're kind of really starting to go with this is as we start to, um, as we've talked about before, is um, you know utilizing our LLM in a lot of different areas. You know we've been building our LLM for again almost the last six years as we come up on our day because that's natural within the you know natural language processing. What we do for our transcription models, what we do for our negative customer sentiment and you know machine learning model type moments. Um, and so we've been building this for a long time and where we're starting to take this is in a lot of different areas. It's looking at customer interactions and, and utilizing it in so many different departments. So I might come in here and say, you know what, I have this 21 minute phone call. Now summarize this call for me. Summarize this call. What this is doing is this is actually connecting to our particular LLM model, sending the transcript directly to it, and then it's going to provide a feedback of essentially a very easy and readable version of what was uh, the summarization of the call. So the customer is trying to make an online purchase with gift cards, but got disconnected. The agent apologized. Uh, the customer had eight gift cards, but could only use two. So again, we're starting to use this in a lot of different ways beyond just you know the general world of where you're seeing JetGPT. I can use it for summarizations. I can even come into play and say, what could this agent have done better? Even looking at it from an understanding of again, even that agent coaching and seeing areas of opportunity and even providing feedback in terms of what agents could have done better on the particular interactions. The agent could have been more proactive in trying to reconnect the customer with the previous agent. Uh, could have been more clear and concise on their communications. So the nice thing with our LLM is that we built it for the contact center. Um, you know, if you use the chat GPTs of the world, that is influenced by every single information of all the internet and all the data that's been used. And you don't really have control over it. If you asked it, hey, how many states are in the United States? And they come back and say 53, that's the answer you get. You can't influence it. You can't adjust it. But with our own model, we have that control so we can start to tailor it to the different industries, start to tailor it to the different customers so that it's giving much more precise information, readable summarizations, and again, even getting into the knowledge base. So this really comes into, really when it comes into that real-time agent assist, we can connect two knowledge bases so that instead of an agent having to look at a particular article, they could even ask a question directly down here and say, hey, what do I need to do in this particular scenario? 
it goes and reviews the, uh, the knowledge base and provides that information directly back. Um, so again, a lot of different areas in terms of where we're taking this LL, you know, our LLM and this generative AI particular scenario to really influence the post call and the real time in the contact center. And getting to that point again, where we talk about what everybody's wanted to know. I just wanna know this, you know, the things I don't. Now I can come in and say, hey, show me the top 10 reasons that people are canceling. Or tell me the top 10 reasons that people are getting upset. And so now I can take this information, harness it in data to really, again, get that information to use it in a usable state from an operational perspective and not having to spend on, you know, on, on, ungodly amounts of time just to review this information, to hopefully get a small percentage of what the actual answer is. All right. So awesome. that is pretty much the demo here today. Yeah, I'll, I'll hand it back to Mandy, or if you again, we have any questions we want to focus on, I'm more than happy to take those. And Kevin, Mandy, Mandy, before you jump back in there, um, I guess one of the good things to point out is that this is an overlay solution, right? Uh, this isn't something that has to replace their existing con contact center, but it's something that it overlays it, but there's definitely a a good return on investment because of the efficiency that it brings in to place, correct? Yeah, a hundred percent. So we work a ton with customers who are on premise and still have some life left in that contact center for maybe a couple of years. And maybe the ultimate digital transformation goal is to move to the cloud. We don't care at all. We work with all on-prem systems, all cloud systems, UCAS and CCAS actually, as long as your company is recording the phone calls. So we're really here to enhance whatever solution you have today, make your agents better, make your you know experience better, make your team more efficient. And ultimately the end goal, right, is improving that CX, that customer experience. Great, thank you very much. And we do have one last poll that um, was just posted on there uh, asking what is the biggest pain point in your contact center? So anybody that would like to respond to that, can do that, and again, we can answer any questions around that. So, Paul, I know that that um, we've been seeing a lot with clients that we've been working with is trying to really dial into the voice of the customer. What what is what are people saying about the product, about the the customer service? Um, you know, when we think about how much the cost of agents uh, cost a company, um, trying to figure out how to to see what that interaction has um, and, and be able to make better decisions is, is really key um, in, in a customer experience and automation strategy. Um, don't you don't you agree with that? Yeah, de definitely agree with that. We are um, pretty much in most of the interactions that we're having with companies out there today, we're seeing exactly that. Um, and, we, and we do have a question that just popped into the Q&A um, from Rachel. And it says, how specifically can you influence and teach the AI? Uh, is it by the knowledge it pulls information from or can you teach it in real time? Yeah, yeah. So it's a great question. So you can do it in a couple of different scenarios in terms of how you can impact the AI. Um, generally, what we look towards from the initial part is, you know, it is a more longer term aspect. You know, it's not like obviously you can provide feedback um, kind of in real time to provide that information, but it is uh, over a longer period, you know, and I'm not saying years or anything like that. It's more a couple of weeks as you start to influence and provide that feedback. And it can happen a couple different ways. Um, one is through the capability of utilizing essentially, let me get rid of this, uh, is actually providing feedback directly within the system. So I can get to see here and say, hey, no transcriptions are incorrect or moments are incorrect. So this actually provides feedback to the system directly from the end users. Um, and so this is where you can impact it, uh, you know, from a more constant state. And through that kind of constant feedback is where we can adjust it. Now we'll also take this from a customer experience perspective and you know, looking at with our CSMs and our onboarding team, if there's more glaring areas of where you need influence or you need to push certain areas some way, our customer, you know, our CSM team and our onboarding team work directly with you to expedite that a little bit more, focus in a little bit more on that. But as you start to use the system more consistently, um, providing that feedback to the system is where you can start to influence the AI and even the transcription accuracy as well.
Perfect. Any other questions from the group that's out there that they want to throw in there? Uh, I'll just follow up with what Catherine, Catherine, you mentioned voice of the customer, right? I think a lot of companies out there today rely on surveys pretty heavily. Um, that's a tool, you know, you purchase, you're like, oh, I'd love to hear what our customers are saying. This goes deeper than that, because think about, you know, who's answering a survey. You're probably absolutely thrilled. It's the best service you've ever had, or you're very angry <laughs> and you want to leave some really negative feedback. So you're really missing out on that big bulk, right? Of just the everyday caller who's calling in with a question and has like, an okay experience gets off the phone. They're probably not answering your survey. So if that's what you're relying on for really that VOC, um, this is a tool that will give you analysis on everything. So you really find that middle percent. Well, and I think something to point out is that it's not just the marketing department that's looking at the voice of the customer. I think that in every company, from different areas, it's important to give people and empower people the data that they need. So you guys mentioned earlier, maybe the legal department wants to see if there's any certain words that are being used um, or, you know, um, it, you know, the operations department, it, everybody from the different areas and companies need to go in and find the data that they're, that will help yeah. them make better decisions. So I think that a lot of times we think about the marketing department in this voice of the customer, but it's so far beyond that. And I think that that's why I don't, I don't know that there's, there's one tool that is the, the end all be all. I think what you need to do is be able to um, understand the pain points and how you can solve those and give people the data that they need to make better decisions. And that's where we see this product where it can overlay. So there's not a big heavy lift and change because that there's so much cost in that change, but being able to ingest that data and then make it easy for um, individuals to receive these dashboards and ports. And they can um, they can eventually, you know, customize those dashboards for themselves. Um, they can have reports sent to them. There's lots of different ways to do that, but it really gives, um, you know, all aspects of the business uh, actionable data. Yep. So I think that that is, um, that's, that's one of the more powerful things and being able to have that, you know, uh, LLM or, you know, people are getting more comfortable with chat GPT like solutions where we can say, summarize this for me, what would you make recommendations and being able to do that to, to optimize that. There's three words that we use in our company is consolidating, reducing, and optimizing. So you really want to be able to consolidate that data and, and, you know, make things more efficient because when there's efficiencies, we're already dealing with lots of, of talent transition, not just in the agent area, but in the, the corporation themselves. So they need to be able to figure out an easier way to translate the data and, and make those decisions, in my opinion. Yeah, 100%. Awesome. Paul, did we have any more questions? No, I think that was it. And I appreciate everybody's final comments there. Um, as we wrap up, if you guys do have any additional comments, please feel mm -hmm. free to reach out to any of us that are on here. Uh, I know uh, Lo and Doug have sent out contact information for you to be able to reach mm -hmm. out to us. We're glad to answer any additional questions one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Catherine, thank you again for hosting this. Uh, Mandy, Kevin, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Doug and Lo, thanks for arranging for everybody to be here. Hope everybody yes. has Memorial Day weekend and Catherine will let you wrap it up here. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for attending. Um, we will get out the recording for uh, the webinar for those that didn't uh, didn't uh, have a chance to jump on. Um, and then our, our staff will reach out on any calls to action and, and follow up with you with any additional uh, questions. If you want a particular, um, you know, uh, private meeting with with observe we're happy to schedule that as well so thank you so much and watch for our next um, webinar next month which is going to be on security which is a very very hot topic right now so thanks everyone and have a great week thanks everybody thank you